afternoon. I have to thank all of you for coming because this has given me the opportunity finally to hear Sanji on one of his favorite topics. Um, Sanji was from Halifax and uh, went to St. Mary's University, graduated in 1989 from there, and then went on to get an MBA from the American Graduate School of International Management in 1991. In 95, he joined the um, Canadian Foreign Service and has served in Mumbai and in Ottawa, including um, as the Director of Operations for the Humanities and he was the Deputy Prime Minister. Um, he was named uh, Consul General of the Ho Chi Minh City in 2003 and in 2006 received uh, Canada's uh, 206 Foreign Service Officer Award by the Association of Professional uh, Foreign Service um, for his outstanding efforts in representing and promoting Canada and Vietnam as uh, Consul when he was Consul General. In 2006, though, in August, he came back to Ottawa and was the Deputy Chief of Protocol until he was then called on to do a much heavier job, and that is um, the Director of Biological Relations and Interdepartmental Coordination on the new Afghanistan Task Force. He's not going to talk to us about that thing. <laughs> um, as Canada's Vice Consul and Assistant Trade Commissioner and Cultural Attaché at the Canadian Consulate in Mumbai, India, he found a way to meet most of Bollywood's movers and shakers, and will tell some stories about his friendships with luminaries such as the late Sunil Dutt, Prem Chopra, Poonam Dillon, John Abraham, Lisa Ray, and his charity work with Sonali Vendra, Salman Khan, and director Karan Johar, and the night he met most of uh, Bollywood royalty at the Tina Ambani uh, 40th birthday bash at the Ambani compound. These are all big names. Um, he'll also give some insight into the other parts that you don't know about Bollywood. We're certainly hoping to hear from him, and that's about the playback people, the singers, the fashion designers, and some of the people that he met behind the scenes. Uh, Lata Mangachar, Babul uh, Supriyo, Sonu Nigam, Manish Balhotra, and Rocky S. For his efforts on the stage, um, which is a stage, I think it's a moving stage for Sanji. He's always on the stage. <laughs> he was appointed to the National Honorary Board of Directors of Theatre Halifax. And he was also named an outstanding Nova Scotia by that group in 2005. He will tell us about the Persis Kambad and Memorial Foundation, which he founded, which uh, uh, Sanji founded in 1997, and on which he continues to serve as the founder of trustee. This foundation awards a yearly scholarship to a student in Mumbai um, and, he, and was set up uh, uh, as a result of a very personal, uh, I'd say, loss on your part by uh, your uh, best friend in Mumbai at the time, whose name is Chrissy's Kambada. Anyway, we don't want to end on that sad word, and I just want to say that if this, this opportunity um, for as a colleague, um, has been a long time coming to watch this performance. I'm sure you'll all enjoy it. Thank you very much, Patty. Um, I wanted to start off by just telling everybody here that I don't watch Bollywood movies. It's true. People find it very funny that I have a lot of friends in, in Bollywood, but I never watch any of their films. In fact, um, I remember one day driving through Bombay, I, I still refer to it as Bombay, and looking up at a billboard and seeing this picture of uh, an upcoming movie and, and, and taking my phone out and calling my very dear friend Suman Ranganathan and saying, Suman, are you in a movie? And she said, yeah, I have a new movie coming out. I said, oh, I, said, I just saw your picture up here on this big billboard. I didn't even know she was an actress. Um, what happened to me is a little bit unusual, I suppose. When I was posted to uh, Mumbai in 1997, I, um, I never really thought that I would get to know all of these, uh, these famous people, but at the time, um, uh, we used to process visas in Mumbai, which we don't do anymore. And uh, so any of the stars that would go to Canada or would want to go to Canada would always be in touch with me because they needed help uh, getting a visa. They didn't need help to get it. These people have traveled all over the world. But the problem is, when you have a Canadian consulate in an apartment building, in a building, an office building, like we did on the fourth floor, you do not want any stars coming to your building. 
Because what happens is that it creates a, a huge commotion downstairs and the elevators get jammed and people go crazy and then there are lineups and, and, and throngs of people uh, when they hear that so, somebody famous is in the building or whatever. So you actually don't want them to come. You actually prefer that they call you and that they send a pune or someone with their paperwork and then you help them that way. So a lot of people would call me and would say that they needed help. And uh, of course, uh, I, would, I would do it. Now, the, the woman who's coming in here, she's going to kill me. Denise is my, my, one of my right-hand people who put together this presentation, and she's my guest. Come sit over. Denise knows all these slides by heart. So you can sit wherever you want. But uh, Denise uh, helped me put this presentation together, which I, I hope you're going to enjoy. Um, I've been back from uh, Mumbai for seven years, and nobody has ever asked me to talk about Bollywood. <laughs> nobody. I tell you, it's the truth. Um, nobody's ever asked me. When I go to an Indian party and, and I don't know a lot of people, I tend to break the ice by asking them, who's your favorite actress, who's your favorite actor, and then maybe I'll tell them a story about that person. Uh, because, you know, I know something about them. But I, I, um, I, uh, I've been back and I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised, to be asked to speak. And I went through a lot of my albums and I pulled a, a bunch of photos and different articles, which I thought you guys might enjoy, and also um, there's some stories behind these pictures. And uh, Denise was kind enough to put together this great presentation. And another one of my colleagues who works with me, Al Noor, is going to operate this, uh, this, this little presentation. And, um, and uh, I think we can get started. I, I think we should kill the lights because uh, you'll get a, a much better view. Um, uh, Anil, I hope that doesn't screw up your, uh, your video there. Wow. And I even have a gift that I'm going to give away tonight for somebody who has the right answer to a trivia question that I'm going to ask later on. So. Um, pay attention to the, the slide, and at the end, whoever guesses the question correctly will win this book, which is called Stardust, Greatest Stars of All Time. This was a gift given to me by Nari Hira, the publisher, and um, I don't want to read it, so I brought it to get rid of it. It's true. And you can see, unlike most gifts that I re-gift, this one is still wrapped in the plastic wrap. When I, when I opened my boxes from my days in India to find all these pictures for you, I found this book and I thought, what a nice gift to give somebody tonight and get it out of my house. So, I am going to give it to you. So now, Noor, uh, now Denise, I know when we hit the button, the first six slides happen automatically and then we will, we will be manual. So hit it, Alnur. This is Denise's showing off at what a wonderful, wonderful PowerPoint person she is. And thank God she's here in case it, it, it takes a minute to warm up here. And if it doesn't work, Denise will be leaving. <laughs> Sanjeev, I change it to manual, so there'll be no automatic. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Amr. Hit the first button. Let's go through here. I think you can hit enter. Oh, Denise de Koning. <laughs> we wanted to make it a little Bollywood, you know, like a film. Keep clicking. Hit the return button probably is faster. There you go. We had to get a we, we had to get a, a, a plug in for the department since we used all of the department's resources to put this together. Um, okay, let's go. That's presented by me. And next one, please. This is a picture that we just found on the internet. It's not from Bollywood, I don't think, is it? No, it has nothing to do with Bollywood, but we thought it looked kind of cute. All right. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start talking about Bollywood. Okay, hit one, hit two more. Al Nuru. This one is uh, some pictures of famous old movies. Um, I actually, when I got to Mumbai in 1997, I my friendships with uh, people in the business actually um, started with Persis Kambata. How many people here remember Persis? You do. You remember Persis? A lot of people. Okay, Persis was somebody who was a very, very dear friend of mine. In fact, in the, in the press, she always used to tell people that I was her best friend. She had come back to Mumbai, we, we hit it off, we were neighbors actually, and um, uh, my uncle knew her way back when she was quite famous in her Star Trek days because uh, he owned a restaurant in Beverly Hills called the Mogul Restaurant. And Persis, and, and she was living with Kabir Baby at the time. They were a couple. Uh, Persis and Kabir Baby used to go to the restaurant quite often. So when I went to Los Angeles as a kid, I wanted to meet her because she was one of the most famous Indians in the world at that time. At the height of her celebrity, she had just appeared on the cover of Time magazine. 
and uh, Star Trek was a huge movie. And uh, I, I couldn't meet her because she was out at the time filming a, a, a movie with Sylvester Stallone. Little did I know that 20 years later, I would be living in Bombay and I would have the chance to meet her by surprise one night at a New Year's Eve party. But if you want to keep going here, I'll work. Okay, this is Persis. Uh, when she came to the Canadian concert after we had become friends, uh, we, we used to do a lot of things together and I used to take her as my guest to most of the social functions that I would go to because we were, we were great friends. Okay, on the right. This is a picture of the Star Trek poster and the movie from, uh, I don't even know what year this movie was made, maybe somebody knows. I think it was maybe uh, 1980, is that possible? 82. Around 82. Uh, Persis uh, became one of the most famous Indians in the world and, and became well known for being uh, the shot here at the bottom right hand side, the bald head, the shaved head. Um, and she, uh, the, the movie was such a huge hit, a uh, worldwide hit, that she became uh, a, a, an overnight sensation. And um, Persis uh, and I had discussed, her 50th birthday was coming up, and I think it was uh, the 25th, yes, it would have been 82 or 83, because the 25th anniversary of the Star Trek movie was coming up, and I had talked to Persis about shaving her head for it. And 25 years later, you know, kind of relaunching her career with, you know, having her, as you, let's have the next slide, as you can see, she had put on a bit of weight, but she uh, was still a beautiful woman, a former Miss India. And this is where we met. This was uh, uh, Christmas, uh, New Year's Eve, 1997. And uh, the man there on the right is Anand Mahendra, who is the CEO of Mahendra and Mahendra, the company in uh, the big conglomerate in, um, in uh, India. And so we had gone to a New Year's Eve party, and when she came in, she was introduced to me, and I thought, oh my god, finally I meet her, uh, and I told her about my uncle, and she remembered everyone very well. Okay, next slide, please. This is a party at my house that we had. I don't know if you can recognize a guy on the left there, that's Vikas Balla, who's become uh, quite well known today. Um, yeah, he hosts a TV show. Uh, he was in Toronto last week and he called me and he told me that he hosts a TV show that comes here in Canada and asked me if I've ever seen it. Of course I said no, because I don't watch any of that stuff. Okay. When Persis died, it was a very sudden event. Uh, we had had dinner on a Friday night. It was in August of 98. And uh, she went home and then she had a massive, massive heart attack. Persis was a chain smoker. Uh, she smoked uh, maybe two or three packages of cigarettes a day and she started when she was 13 years old. So she was, uh, it was something that a lot of people didn't know unless you lived in Bombay, but she was a very, very heavy smoker. And, uh, and she died of a massive heart attack. I think she was 48. And um, I was the last one to have dinner with her and, uh, and, and we had talked a lot about stuff that she wanted to do. She was just getting ready to host a TV show and uh, she was going to um, be ho interviewing people a talk show, and uh, she wanted to have all of her clothes made for the show um, in, um, by the fashion design students of, of the National Institute of Fashion Technology, which we call NIFT. Uh, she wanted to have the clothes designed by the students to give the students an opportunity to highlight some of their, their fashion on, uh, on television. Um, but when she died, I felt that it was very important that we, we keep her memory alive because she was an, you know, the first Indian ever to present at the Academy Awards. She, was, she had trailblazed a lot of different things, and I, I just thought that her death was so untimely that I instituted this award called the Persis Kambata Memorial Award. Now, in India, uh, for those of you who have lived there, a lot of people make a lot of announcements, and then you never hear about it again. And so I was very, and I, I don't say that in, in a disrespectful way, but it, that happens here too. But people like to grab the limelight or the spotlight, and then they like to fade away. So I was very insistent that if I announce this award, that it be given every year. Let's go to the next slide, please. Um, this was uh, some, uh, some, uh, some uh, you can see she was Miss India in 1965. And uh, this is uh, another story that appeared in the, uh, in, the, um, in the paper. The funny thing about the day of the funeral was that um, she died so suddenly the night before, and being a Parsi, she had to be buried uh, the very next day. And my entire office, the entire consulate, was calling everyone to notify them about the death because it was too late in the day to make the news and the funeral was the very next morning. So uh, it just so happened that Kabir Bedi was there in town because his ex-wife, uh, Patima Bedi, had just disappeared in uh, a, flash a flash flood. Where was that? Uh, near Delhi somewhere. Yeah. yeah, so she had disappeared and he had flown into Bombay to uh, try to find him. He was going up to wherever she was and, and all that. So he was in town, so we were all together 
uh, for the um, for the uh, uh, funeral. Um, these are just a few clippings that uh, I've, I've checked for you. And uh, I want to tell you that uh, before we launched the award, I, I wanted uh, uh, to create a trophy that would capture Persis at her prime. So I wanted it to be modeled on the, uh, the role she played in Star Trek. So I found a, a guy who could do very nice um, sculptures, and I, I commissioned him to do a sculpture of the award, and I raised a lot of money. I raised a lot of money from all of her friends and from um, a lot of uh, important people to start a foundation of which I am still today the, uh, the sole trustee. I'm the only one, I'm the only one that, that runs it. I had planned to hand it over to Manish Malhotra, but Manish turned out to be completely unreliable, a story I will tell you about later. I figure that if you want to know the truth about some of the personalities in Bollywood, you're going to hear it here tonight. So okay. after I found out that I couldn't count on Manish, I decided to keep it. And every year, I cut the check from here, from Canada. The foundation is based in Bombay at the Bank of Nova Scotia in Mumbai and we give a 10,000 rupee check to a student. Uh, we have done it eight years in a row. She's been dead for nine years. One year we did not do it, which was last year, because the, the scholarship goes to a graduating student from NIFT, from the National Institute of Fashion Technology. I wanted the scholarship to be, to be given to a student there, because they're creating the best fashion designers in India today, and I wanted her memory to live on through them, because she had wanted those students, as I said, to make her clothes for her TV show, which, which never happened. So um, that scholarship has been given every single year, except last year, because last year they changed the program from a one-year program to a two-year. So there was no graduation class last year. Um, so um, uh, we, um, we got the award done. I had her family endorse everything that I did. Uh, they lent me all of her clothes that she had worn from all of her famous movies. And we took them all downtown to Mumbai, first time they were ever put on display. And we created all these windows, these panels of her, including the doll that was made of her from the Star Trek days. Everything was displayed in a, in a downtown bar called the Fashion Bistro and Bar, which was a very famous uh, hangout for, for celebrities. And we had uh, models come and wear the clothes, and we had them walk through the crowd, and we had all the media there, a lot of former Miss Indias, and we unveiled the statue at that event. Here's another picture of Chris here at the top. And this is the award here. And this girl uh, wearing the green and black holding it is Diana Kamata, who is Persis's niece. And I wanted Diana to unveil it. And um, I had asked her to present it every year. But usually every year I just send it to the school because Diana's always, she's a bit busy. It's hard, it's very far away in, um, near the airport because uh, I usually do it at the, um, at the hotel there, the La Villa. So uh, anyway, that's the award. And that's a sculpture of, of Persis when she was in Star Trek with her arms outstretched to the sky. These are a couple of models wearing some of her clothes, and that night was really a great night for all of us. This is the girl who won it uh, just in uh, April of this year. Every year the school sends me a photograph of the winner. Uh, the woman on the left here is Mayor Castellino. I think she's a former Miss India as well, and an editor of uh, Femina magazine. And I have no idea who the other people are, but uh, the award is, is given student to student every year, and then the girl's smiling because she's holding a check in that envelope. <laughs> and that check is from me. Salman Khan, one of my favorite people who just got out of jail a few days ago. <laughs> uh, two of the people you're going to see here tonight are both out of jail. And I was, uh, I was telling Denise how happy I was that they're all out of jail. Otherwise, I wouldn't have anything to talk about. But before I talk about Salman, uh, here's your, your trivia question. And if you're from the Indian High Commission, you don't qualify for this prize. <laughs> I have to, dis I, have to uh, I have I can't have them participate. What was the name of the book that Persis published uh, the year before she died? Put up your hand if you know the answer. Don't yell it out. If you know the answer, you are going to win a very nice prize. What was the name of the book that Persis Kambata published, wrote and published the year before she died? Very famous book. I'll come up with another question if you don't know. Okay, nobody knows? Going once? Okay, how about Indian High Commission? Anybody know? No? It was this book here. Very famous book called Pride in India. A tribute to Miss Indias. This is a book that Persis put together because in 1984 when Indira Gandhi was in Los Angeles, Kabir Gandhi and Persis were asked to meet her and greet her. And when she was introduced to Indira Gandhi, Indira Gandhi said, of course, who doesn't know Persis? She's the pride of India. So that's where the title came for her book. And this particular book, Pride of India, 
the one that I have in my hand is a gift from the publisher, uh, who was one of the founders of the of the foundation uh, of the trust. It was one of the trustees of the foundation with me, and it's one of the few books in the world that is signed by every former Miss India. They had a whole bunch of these signed by all the women who came to the book launch. I've been offered 25,000 US dollars for this book, and I have not sold it because it means a lot to me. But if anybody wants to give me 25,000, sit me after. Because <laughs> I have another copy, one other copy, but it's not signed. Um, no, I'm just kidding. This book is, um, this was done by Persis, and you can flip through it later. Uh, Pride of India, it's beautifully done. She did a lot of research on it and uh, and worked like crazy to get it out and then she did and it was a big uh, big event in India because you know how the Indians love their Miss Indias. So um, it was a very big achievement for her and so if you want to flip through it afterwards, you can. But that means I have to think of another, well I can see, I, I can try to think about a question about Salman. Um, and it'll be a plastic surgery question and I know we have a plastic <laughs> surgeon in the room. So he'll be disqualified from answering, but I will ask it to you in a few moments. Salman Khan. This is a picture of Salman. Uh, uh, meeting Salman at a, at a restaurant. Um, Salman had a lot of trouble, and I had become very well known in Bombay by this time because of uh, the Persis, the work I'd done for Persis, and and I had uh, the woman in the orange salar kameez here was uh, a woman who was in charge of a, a group called the uh, Cancer Patients Aid Association (CPAA). And I, uh, in Vietnam also, but in India, I always choose one charity to help. And I had decided to help the CPAA, and uh, they had named me the honorary chairman. So I used to do a lot of events with them, and use a lot of stars through my own contacts to help raise money for them. So Salman, uh, at this time, he had uh, had a lot of problems. This is just after he had shot those black bucks in Rajasthan. And his father and two mothers, he has two mothers, uh, Helen and, and his Indian mother, they came to my office to meet me, to ask me if I could help to rehabilitate his image. They wanted him to do some work with me, so that I could try to, I used to get a lot of positive press coverage, they wanted me to kind of do some stuff with him. So I knew Salman because my next door neighbors, uh, in front, well, the neighbors in front of me were uh, film producers, and they used to have parties all the time, and they always invited me, and I used to meet Salman there, and Subhash Gai, and Ashwarya, and you name it, they always used to be at these parties. So. I told the parents that I would do it on three conditions, and I said the first condition is that uh, he has to do exactly what I say. Like, no matter what I want or what I want him to do, he has to do it. And they said, okay. I said, secondly, I said, you have to be there that night, the parents. You all three have to be with him at the event. And they agreed, and I'll tell you why I said these things. And the third thing is that I said he can't smoke or drink, um, you know, when he's at the event, uh, before or after, like I don't want any, you know, no problem. So. The reason I said I wanted him to do whatever I said was because I'd seen him before in social events, and he's a little, he, Salman is one of the nicest guys I've, I've met. I really like him. But when he's been drinking, he is a completely different person. He's like, alcohol is poison to this guy. Like, every, and you all know, every time he's gotten into trouble, it's been because of alcohol. So I, I, I think he, you know, I don't know if he has a problem, but I just think he, he shouldn't drink. Uh, the other thing I noticed is that he is terrified of his father. I mean, he will not even get out of a chair if his father is there without asking his father for permission. He absolutely is terrified of his dad. So I wanted the father there to control him. You know, the chair the <laughs> and the third thing, uh, I just wanted him to, to behave. Anyway, he came, and uh, we had raised a lot of money before he arrived, and I had him come, and I had all these gifts, um, and I had him uh, play with all these, these sick kids. <laughs> And uh, all the kids are there. And these, they're, they're his parents here. This is um, his father, Salim, and his Indian mother, and Helen. Yeah, they all came. Uh, they kept their word. This is Nana Chidasma, who was a former sheriff of Bombay, and Sidhu Jastanwala, who was, the, who was also involved with CPAA. But I had them all there, as you can see. They promised me they'd come, and they did. And we did a lot of fundraising. Uh, we raised about three lakhs that night for the cancer patients. But the funny thing was, when Salman came, he surprised me and gave me a check for 10 lakhs. He had raised one lakh from every movie star or producer that he had done a film with in the last year. Every single person had given a lakh, and he gave me 10 lakhs plus our three. We raised 13 lakhs. So it was a great surprise. And this is him on his way up. Yeah. Let's hear it for Salman. Nobody claps for him now. So. So then um, I thought I'd show you just a few, a few shots of the publicity that he got. 
uh, because uh, he got a lot of a lot of great publicity out of this event. Carry on. You see, it was a full house Monday night at three flights up, but one that made for a rare sight. Uh, and they go on to say, Uncle Salman had promised to pay them a visit. And then, of course, my name. There's no article up here. If my name is not in it, it's not up here. So, <laughs> you can look for it. Uh, Salim Khan, Salma Khan, and Helen, you know, uh, the children waited for a whole hour before their hero walked in, blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, I guess two lakhs, and then, uh, I don't know if they, they talk. First, 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 up there? I did say how much it was. I can't. First call. I think it was ten. Anyway, ten plus two or ten plus three. So uh, uh, let's have the next one. This is uh, just to give you an idea of some of the, the, the publicity that he got. A lot of, lot of, uh, a lot of great uh, publicity, and, and started him down a, a road that gave him the opportunity to um, to try to rehabilitate his image. But you know, after that. Um, I had never had any problem getting any single star I wanted to do anything. Uh, first of all, they were always happy to partner with me. Secondly, they knew that they were going to get good publicity out of it. And on any star that does anything, I found in Bombay anyway, everybody will help you, but nobody wants to lead or organize anything. So if you are calling and saying, I want you to show up here, or I want you to do this, or this is what we're going to do. I used to speak to Ashwari and his mother on the phone all the time and talk about different events that I wanted to do. And, and Ash was always out of town, but her mother was like, oh, you know, read about all the stuff you do with the stars, it's so nice. And of course, you know, if she's here, we'll do it. People want to do it, but nobody has the ideas to do it, or the time or the inclination to organize it. So if you offer them something on a plate, like this is all you have to do, you have to show up here from such and such time, you have to do this, we're going to have gifts for you to give out, blah, 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 they're very happy to do it. They're lazy. This is um, um, Christmas Day, uh, I can't remember the year, but Sonali Bendre became a very good friend of mine. And she, uh, this is her on the right side. Do people know Sonali Bendre? Okay. Sonali is an actress who I feel is very talented, very sweet. I really like her. But she has never hit the big time. She's never had that monster hit, you know, that's kind of propelled her into the limelight, which is too bad because she is the nicest woman. She's so sweet. And she was supposed to fly to Australia to do um, a shoot, and she delayed her her flight by two days so that she could be here and play um, play uh, Mrs. Claus. The Santa that I had hired was an Indian Santa, and the guy never showed up. So luckily, I had a guest staying with me from Canada, and I told him, get this suit on. And he put the suit on, he didn't know what was going on. That's him. That's why, that's why there's a white Santa Claus in this photo. And then, after two hours, the real Santa showed up, and I told him, I took my, I had a couple of big guys with me, I told them, get rid of him, you know, because it'll cause the children to be traumatized if they see two Santa. <laughs> so, that was it. So, Nally came, next slide, please. And she did uh, a bunch of uh, stuff with the kids, played with them, bowled. We shut down the whole bowling alley in Central Bombay. And uh, she also got a lot of great publicity. Here we go. So, Nally to play Santa for Cancer Children. Um, Every time we did this, we always had a lot of kids. It was always for the kids. So, you know, the kids would get a gift, they'd get a visit from Santa, they'd, they'd have a picture <coughs> or whatever from a star. It was always about the kids. Next one. <coughs> there was a line in this thing that I liked very much. I think it was, um, they said, you know, her greatest role yet, you know? Um, <coughs> This is not me, but this is another Sanjeev. But a very chubby and smiling Sanjeev Kumar Haldar said he was happy to get happy to touch Vendre. A resident of Bihar, the 13-year-old was in the city for treatment for Hodgkin's disease. So these kids always used to really, um, I mean, they really loved it. And, and these stars would do anything. Next one, please. They'd do anything. Here's Sonali. A lot of the kids have to wear masks, you know, because they're so ill. And they uh, they can't breathe in any germs and stuff. So that's what you see around um, uh, around their faces. But. I mean, they really go crazy. The kids really go crazy. And the stars are always so good with the kids. It's, a, it's wonderful to see. Okay. Lisa Ray. How many people here have heard of Lisa Ray? Lisa Ray is in Toronto right now. She's got a, two films releasing at the Toronto International Film Festival. Lisa's a Canadian, of course, and um, I used her a lot for events in uh, Bombay, um, for Canadian consulate events. And we became great friends. This is a picture of us 
um, at a, a photo exhibit on Toronto, I had her come and I, I had her be the chief guest, and uh, there were maybe like 30 pictures of Toronto. Lisa, um, her father and mother uh, still live just outside of Toronto, and uh, I got to know them very, very well. I have a lot of time for Lisa. I like her very much. Um, the one thing about Lisa is that you can never be sure she's going to show up somewhere. So uh, you always have to be very careful. Uh, this is going on the web, isn't it? I better be careful what I say. I love Lisa. I love Lisa. But uh, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful because she she sometimes forgets to show up. So it's true. So I mean, I have to be a little bit careful with her. This is. Uh, she's had a great few years. She's had a great few years. Um, I was in Sri Lanka in 2005 for three months, and she wrote to me and said she wanted to come visit because she had filmed Water. The latest, her latest hit, Water, was filmed in Sri Lanka. Um, and, uh, and she never came, though. She, couldn't, she didn't show up. <laughs> uh, but not because she didn't want to. I'm sure there she is. She's, a, she's beautiful. She's a lovely girl. Uh, I have a lot of time for her. This is a picture of us at a party. I thought I looked particularly good there, so that's why. <laughs> John Abraham, my favorite. This is John and I. We went all the way down to Pune together. We drove down. Uh, I took him with me because uh, we wanted to do a Cancer Patients Aid Association event in Pune. He, uh, being, at the time, he was just a supermodel in uh, the year 2000. And uh, I have to tell you, when you look at the new generation of stars like John Abraham, how many people here have heard of Samir already? Nobody? Well, that's good because uh, I invited her to come here today. She's in Toronto and she couldn't come. So, anyway, um, Samira's done a few, she's in Toronto as well. And uh, uh, who else am I thinking of? Because Balla, I think he's been in some movies, but he's, he's mostly doing TV. Um, uh, uh, Shahid Kapoor, uh, who I know very well. Shahid, um, when you think of the new generation of stars, I mean, John Abraham is by far the nicest kindest, down-to-earth, intelligent, he's an MBA graduate. Um, he, you know, he, his mother's a Parsi, his father's a Christian. Uh, he's just a tremendous person, I, I, I can't tell you. I, um, I became quite friendly with him just before I left. In the year 2000, we became very good friends. And then in 2005, I was sent back to Bombay as acting consul general. I was in Vietnam at the time, but uh, Paul Martin was planning a trip to India and the consul general there was, was not well. And so she had been uh, sent to Singapore for medical treatment, and uh, they flew me from Ho Chi Minh City into, into Bombay to be acting consul general for a month, uh, which was a great thrill for me because, uh, you know, when I started in Bombay, I was the vice consul, and that's like being the janitor in a school. <laughs> and when you come back as the principal, it's quite a nice return. <laughs> So I came back to the acting consul general and John called and said he'd like to see me, he wanted to meet me on and I said, look, you know, the Prime Minister's coming in three and a half weeks. If you want to see me, you have to see me this Sunday because after that I can't see anybody. I've got to really, you know, I'm going to buckle down. There are only three and a half weeks left. And he said, fine, Sunday, so I'll come to the Old Roy. Um, I'll come up to your room, we'll chat. And then uh, he said, I'll take you for lunch. And I said, I can't go for lunch. Um, I said, you can come with me. There's a party for me. All my friends are having a party. You can come. And he said, fine. So on Sunday, Sunday came and um, it was 11 o'clock and I said to my driver, I said, call John and see you know, how far away he is. So the driver called and John said, I'm in, I'm in uh, Bandra and I'm dubbing, so I can't come. So I got on the phone and I said, listen you little shit. I said, I'm not the vice consul anymore, I'm the consul general. <laughs> and, uh, I said, a lot of people want to see me. And I said, I don't care how big a star you are, or supposedly are. Uh, I know that my staff keep telling me you're a big star, but I said, I don't give a shit. I said, don't do this to, to me again. I said, a lot of people want to see me, I'm really busy, and I am, you know, I don't have time. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay, let's have lunch on Tuesday. And you pick the place, I'll be there. I said, okay, uh, I said, China Garden. And he said, um, okay. And I, and I said, I'll meet you halfway, you know, since you're coming from Bangor. So we went to China Garden on Tuesday, and he got there half an hour early, I think he was terrified. <laughs> and when I got there, there were TV cameras everywhere, you know? And I walked in the restaurant and I was just watching him and then he finished doing some interviews and the cameras left and then he, he said to me, oh, he said, I'm so sorry, you know, they, I didn't call anybody but they saw me here and the cameras came and anyway, we had lunch and we had a great time chatting and catching up and um, he, uh, I was particularly happy because there was no bill 
the owner said, oh, well, I'm so happy to see John Abraham didn't give a shit about me. But, uh, no bill, no bill. So I was very happy about that. And then uh, John said to me, he said, uh, you know, why don't you come to the Hero Honda Awards uh, this week? I'm dancing. And John cannot dance. He, he actually can't. I'm not being mean, but he's a huge guy. He's extremely big and strong. And he's not flexible or agile at all. So he said to me, it's going to be a disaster. But he said, you know, I have a good movie out. It's called Boom. Have you seen it? And I said, no. And he said, you know, um, he said, well, it's been a big hit, and I'm doing a number from there. And I said, okay, um, I'll come. But I said, I, you have to give me two tickets, because I never go by myself anywhere. I said, I have to come with a friend. So he gave me two tickets. He had them sent to the office, and, he, and I sat with his mother, and he danced, and we had a great time. But um, John, uh, John is really, really doing well, and I, I I still get messages from him when he needs a visa, usually. Um, you know, even though he doesn't need my help, uh, he's been here many times. But he uh, he came to Toronto last year and opened um, the film festival with the movie Water, uh, which is directed by Deepa Mehta. But I just can't say enough good things about him. I just think he's an incredible person. And uh, the first time we met, he said to me, oh, you know, you met my father last year uh, at the Rotary Club. My father introduced you, you were speaking. And the first thing I said to John was, oh my god, I said, I hope I was nice to your father. And he said, yes, yes, you were very nice. I said, thank God. Um, he's just a great guy. And I, I, I think um, when we left the restaurant that day, it hit me uh, what a big star he had become. Because all of a sudden, when we left China Garden in Bombay, we came outside, there were police everywhere. And they had lined up on one side and on the other to give him a, a path to walk to his car. And people had been lining up, I guess, for the hour and a half that we were having lunch. I didn't even notice because I had heard that he was there. So I turned to him as we were walking and I said, God, I said, you know, you're really a big star now. You know, I mean, I before you were a model and, you know, we used to just, you know, do crazy stuff together, but you're really big. And I said, wow, I'm, I'm so proud of you. And then he started telling me how much money he made and how many houses he owned <laughs> and how he wanted me to come and see him. I said, okay, shut up. I don't need to hear all that. But uh, he's done well. And I, I just think he's a great guy. I think he's a model of what a Bollywood star should be. John, I hope you watch this on the internet. Okay, next photo. <laughs> Baman Adani, does anybody know him? Yeah. Baman, uh, you know, uh, was, was, I entered the business as a photographer, but I understand, because I, like I said, I don't watch any movies, but I understand he's become a very big comedic actor. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Baman used to do all my photography. He used to do all my shots and all the stuff that I used to do for newspapers, magazines, and now he's a big star. Um, and he's hilarious. He was a stage actor. But this is another guy who every actor should emulate. Uh, a gentleman through and through, never misbehaves. I mean, number one. Shobade, who knows Shobade? Shobade? Shobade is here in the middle. I met Shobade in 1997 in November. Uh, and I went up to her and I said, oh, you know, I know who you are, blah, blah, blah. And um, I said to her, I saw a documentary about you on the BBC, about Bombay actually, but you were in it. And it really made me think that I should come to Bombay. And I met her, but we never really, you know, became friends or anything. But in my last year, I was doing a lot of work with the Cancer Patients Aid Association, and so, so was she. So we did a lot of stuff together and we became friendly. Sean McDowell, has anybody ever heard of him? Sean McDowell is uh, like one of these great, uh, he's a great singer, but he's really a choreographer. He won the President's Award for um, Dilto Fatherland. I've only, I never even saw that movie. But he, he won the President's Award for that, for the choreography. And, uh, and I met a lot of people through Shamak. And he's in Vancouver now. He's got the Shamak Babur Institute for the Performing Arts. And I really enjoy him. He's, he's the funniest guy in the world. He's the one who trained Shahid Kapoor. So when you see Shahid dancing, it's all from the Shamak Babur Institute. And that's where I met uh, Shahid. This is Sunil Dutt. Sunil Dutt on the right here, the late, great Sunil Dutt. I always say the late, great Sunil Dutt because this man was, I think, uh, the, the one individual I met and spent a lot of time with in India during my three years who um, impressed me the most. This is uh, a gentleman who just commanded the respect of everyone. Uh, he got ill and he was staying, he was at the Breach Candy Hospital, which is the same hospital where Amitabh Bachchan was when he had his surgery and where Vajpayee. It just so happened I lived next door to the Breach Candy Hospital. So I used to go and visit him in the intensive care unit every day. And he could talk and we, we, we were very close. He was very good friends with my uncle in Delhi. So um, uh, we became close as a result. And his daughter Priya, 
recently uh, became a member of the Lok Sabha, the parliament, in his old seat. And I spoke to her recently and I congratulated her on that. I didn't mention her brother. This is Limarina D'Souza, Miss India Universe, 1998. Uh, Limarina went on to um, to participate in the Miss India Universe in the Miss Universe pageant. She finished in the top ten, but she didn't do uh, better than that. But we were great friends. She ended up marrying an American. The reason we were friends is because I had a student staying with me from Canada for a year, and she was dating that student. She was dating my roommate. <laughs> And let me tell you, when she won Miss India, he became a lot more interested in her than he was before. <laughs> Poonam Dillon, anybody know Poonam? Yeah. Poonam is a lovely, lovely person. She's a bit crazy in the sense that she really believes a lot in astrology. Um, she called me one day on my private line and I picked up the phone and she said, Sanjeev, it's Poonam, do you remember me? And I said, no. She said, you are the only man in the history of the world who has ever said that to me when I said, is this Poonam Dillon, do you remember me? I didn't know who she was. Then I said, oh, that Poonam, I just pretended. I really didn't know. But we had met, and we became great friends over two years. And when I went back to India in September of uh, 03, on my way to Vietnam, she came and cut my cake with me for my birthday. And it was in all the papers all across uh, Bombay and, and around India, Poonam and I cutting, uh, cutting the cake. I like her. She's a riot. She's so funny. She's so for everything. The Lair Mendy, who knows him? This guy is crazy. The Lair Mendy is absolutely insane. I mean, he was performing at a wedding. I went to a wedding of some diamond merchants in Bombay, and they were so wealthy, they flew the Lair Mendy up to Mumbai for the uh, for the wedding pre-wedding dance or something. Anyway, um, he came with me after because we, we were a bunch of friends. He came with me uh, up, upstairs from the lobby, and I remember my driver looking at him and doing a double take, thinking, is that the Lair Mendy? And we went in my car, we drove to his friend's house, he sang the whole time, the whole night. All he does is sing. He literally just doesn't stop singing. In fact, you want to slap him sometimes because it's annoying. But this is at the height of his uh, popularity. And this, uh, this uh, album down here, Denise found on the internet, I guess this is his latest release. But um, I really, I found him to be a lot of fun. Pankaj Udas, anybody know him? I think he's got the most beautiful voice in India. I really do. I like him more than Jagjit Singh. I like him uh, more than, uh, than, than a lot of the Gazo singers. Um, this guy, I mean, he looks like a mouse. He's so small, but he has the voice of a mouse. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, you know, you, you won't believe it. I guess it's like a little bit like Lata Mangeshkar. You know, she looks so small, but um, but she has a big voice. Jackie Shroff. Jackie is is really crazy. I like him a lot, but I gotta tell you, Jackie is the one Bollywood star who shows up at everything. He'll show up at the opening of an envelope. I mean, this guy is available for anything. I don't know why, but I guess he's not working that much these days. Of course, you see the beer there in front of him. But he's a riot. He's, he's a lovely person. And the, the guy who's loved the most by the masses, the crowd, <coughs> is Jack. He gets out of a car somewhere, and people are just screaming and whistling. And I mean, they love Jack. And he's a real man of the people star. And I liked him a lot. And um, we used to do some things together, but he. He's just, you know, he's, a, he's always around. Like, if you need a star to be anywhere for anything, you can call him. That's why I never called him. I tried to go after other stars, but I knew that Jackie would always be there. There's our guy who just got out of jail also a few days ago. Sanjay Dutt. What can I tell you about Sanjay? God, he's nothing like his dad, you know. He's, uh, he's different. But I tell you, I like him. I don't know. There's something about him, and the people love him. There's something about him. He's 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 a big big monster guy, uh, but he's a, he's sweet. You know, he's a sweet person. I I don't understand really um, the trouble that he's gotten into or that Salman has gotten into. I mean, they have great parents. You know, it just goes to show you that you can never tell a lot about your kid. I mean, some of you here have kids that are in jail. I'm sure we all do. But you know, you may be a neurosurgeon or a plastic surgeon or something. But you know what I mean? We never know how a kid is going to turn out, and he's had some problems. But I like him a lot. I, I, he's one of my favorites, for sure. Um, a lot of fun. Akshay Khanna, this is a great story. I love this. Uh, Thal, the movie Thal was filmed in Toronto. Do you remember? Ashwarya came to Canada and she filmed the dance sequence in the uh, Skydome. I, the person in front of you, arranged for all that to happen. And Shama Thalver did the choreography and everything. 
And this man and this woman that you see here is the Canadian, at that time, the Canadian High Commissioner to India, Peter Walker, and his wife, Janet. And this is in Bombay. They came for Canada Day, when I had a thousand people show up for the biggest ever Canada Day. And Akshay came and gave him this gift. Now, why would Akshay come to this event and give them this gift? I'll tell you why. Subhash Ghai made me come out in the middle of nowhere to see all these people dancing, Shahid Kapoor and Shahmek and everybody, asked me to help him get the visas for everyone to go and do the shoot. I did, and then I told him when the movie is released in Delhi, I want you to invite the Canadian High Commissioner and his wife. And he did. But of course, like many events that the Bollywood crowd does, the High Commissioner and his wife and their police escort made it to the premiere in Delhi. Nobody received them. Nobody gave them a seat, told them where to go. The movie didn't start for two hours late. Subhash Guy didn't even say hello. They left. And I have to tell you, this High Commissioner was a great guy. He used to let me do anything I wanted. And I was so angry that he had been treated like this that I phoned Subhash Guy the next morning at 9 o'clock in the morning. And I got him out of bed. And I gave him hell. I literally gave him a piece of my mind. I told him, if the US ambassador had shown up there, you would have tripped all over yourself. I said, you're a damn disgrace. I said, I don't give a shit what kind of thing in this office. I said, you have treated the Canadian High Commissioner like dirt. And I said, it's unacceptable. I said, you cannot do these things. I said, they did everything to help you and your huge crew of 40, people who would never get on a plane, forget about going to Canada. And this is how they were treated. I was furious. So he said, Sanjeev, Saab, what can I do? <laughs> Tell me one thing I can do to make it up to you and I'll do it. I said, fine. Of course, I had already had in my mind what I wanted him to do. <laughs> he may be smart, but I'm smarter than him. Yeah. So I said, I want Akshay Khanna to come to Canada Day next week and I want him to present a gift. I want him on stage, blah, blah, blah. So of course he came and he did it. But that's how I got him there. Akshay's, uh, Akshay's um, uh, uh, stepmother, Kavita Kanna, and her husband, Vinod Kanna, uh, Kavita's sister was one of my very, very close friends in Bombay. And uh, so I, I used to keep track of these guys, but I didn't know them. This is uh, an article about the Canada Day. This shows you the height of Canada's popularity in Bombay in 2000. In 1999, I guess, the year. It was a national day which saw over a thousand of the city's top movers and shakers crowding in the Taj Ballroom to celebrate Canada Day, day with special guests Peter Walker, Canada's High Commissioner of India, and his charming wife, Janet Burns, who flew from Delhi. They talk about uh, Akshay Khanna coming. They talk about uh, all, some of the big shots that were there. And then at the end here, they talk about um, Rohit Ball, who flew in from Delhi. Uh, who here has heard of Rohit Ball before? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows him. Very famous fashion designer. Rohit Ball and I, uh, we, we, when I first arrived in India, I met him. I met him on the phone, basically. We talked on the phone, and we didn't get along at all. It was like oil and water. So I didn't talk to him for about a year. And then he, um, he, I found out he was related to my neighbors across the street, the ones that used to have the parties all the time. So we became, I don't know, we, we met and we became friends and uh, he used to fly me down to Delhi all the time for different shows and things and he used to come up to Bombay and then he used to stay with me. He always stayed with me when he came to Bombay because I lived in front of his relatives and the relatives had little kids and he could never sleep. And this is a guy, I mean I gave him a key to my house, this is a guy who would come home every day at 5 in the morning. <laughs> I would be getting up to go to work and he'd be coming back from a night on the town. He is one of the most lovely people. Um, his clothes are very beautiful, very expensive. Uh, he is, uh, I think, one of the most, has one of the most creative minds in India. I think he's one of their best artists. You don't think of a fashion designer as an artist, but I do. I think he's, he's great. He's my favorite by far. And uh, I, think, uh, I think that he's probably not even hit the level of, of success that he's going to have in the world. I think it, you know people are discovering Indian fashion now, so I think uh, in, in bigger ways. So I think that's it. This is the last slide. This is um, a picture of Madhu Sapre. Does anybody know Madhu Sapre? Does anybody remember her? Do you remember a few years ago, or maybe I don't know, when she became she was in the Miss Universe pageant and she screwed up her answer, her final answer. There were just two candidates left, and they asked her what she would do if she was the prime minister of India. And she said she'd build a sports stadium. <laughs> Do people remember that? 
Madhu and I became great friends, but she's not the, the sharpest tack in the toolbox, if you know what I mean. Um, she's married now to some Italian guy. I haven't seen her for years. But we used to do this is Suchitra Pillay up uh, above there. And we did this uh, anti smoking campaign uh, for kids. And I got all the Bollywood stars and, and other celebrities, fashion designers, models. I wrote them all in to, um, to come with me to schools. And we visited all these schools around Bombay. And we uh, used to talk to them about, about anti smoking. And that's, uh, I, just, I just threw that in. That's it. So those are the, some of the slides. And, be, and before I, I wrap up, I'll just tell you a couple of stories because I, I did say I talk about playback singers and others. Um, a lot of the playback singers I got to know because some of them are married to Canadians. Like Babu Suprio, for example, is married to a Canadian. And I, I got to meet him and, uh, and sort of meet him very often. And, um, and uh, I met Natha Mangeshkar only one time. But uh, and she was just so tiny and small. Um, I mean, it's an, it's, she has an amazing voice, but she's very whimsical. She's another person who will not show off often. If you, I mean, and you can be a Birla or uh, an Ambani, and you can invite her, and she's coming, and she just doesn't appear. Like she doesn't care who the person is. She's very whimsical. That's a word that we use to describe her. But I guess when you're the songbird of India, you can be whimsical. Uh, you can do whatever you want when you've had as many hits as she has. Um, but an interesting personality. Um, I want to tell you very, very quickly, and then I'll end, about the, 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 the Tina Bonnie birthday bash I went to. Uh, Tina turned 40 years old on, uh, her birthday's on, on Valentine's Day, and um, it was uh, the year 2000, I think. Yeah, February 2000, and the Ambani's called and said that, that they would like me to come uh, to this party, and I said that I'd be happy to go, but I, I insisted on a written invitation because I don't go to parties that I'm not invited to, and I always like to have an invitation. So they sent an invitation over, and I went with a lot of my friends, and I met many people that night. I met Amita Bachchan and Abhishek Bachchan, and I mean, you name it, the who's who. Uh, uh, Tina Ambani is, for those of you who don't know, formerly Tina Munim, right? movie star who married um, Anil Ambani. So, and Anil is a very, you know, kind of, um, he likes the Bollywood scene and he likes all that stuff. So, so Tina, Tina's birthday party was quite fun. And I found myself um, sitting at a table when somebody leaned over to me and said, oh, you know, I, I really admire the work you did with the Persis Kambata Memorial Foundation. And, and it was just, uh, it was really uh, lovely. And I, I looked at her and I said, oh, thank you. And I said, my name is so-and-so. And she said, yes, I know. And she said, I'm Praveen Babi. And uh, I, and she was one of Persis's compatriots. And I didn't recognize her because she has one eye that's slightly closed. And, uh, and I met her a year after in Toronto as well. Uh, but uh, you just didn't know who you were going to run into there. It was like a, a feast for the eyes for so many people. But um, uh, of course we know, you know since that time, Mukesh Ambani and Anil Ambani have had a big fight and they've, they've kind of split, uh, the, split the family a little bit. But uh, Anil was the kind of guy, uh, he married, of course, like I said, uh, Tina Muni, but he always liked uh, the glitterati and, the, and the, you know, the paparazzi and that kind of stuff, whereas Mukesh, the older brother, um, shied away from all of that stuff. So it was a very interesting evening, certainly one I will never forget, because everybody who was anybody was there. And Amitabh Bachchan, I, Amitabh, I must tell you, um, he's very, very quiet. He's not the kind of you know, personality that you see on the screen or on TV. He comes to life when they say action. Otherwise, he's very quiet. And he was sitting there and I was talking to him. You know, he's got his deep voice. I could hardly understand him. And he, I could hardly get anything out of him. And then uh, Rita Mehta, who's the publisher of Cinebooks magazine, she told me, she said, one of the most difficult uh, interviews she ever had in her life, and one of the most difficult was when she had to ride from South Bombay in a car with Amitabh Bachchan all the way up to Juhu. And he wouldn't talk at all. He doesn't talk. Very strong, silent type. At the time when I met Abhishek, I thought, uh, and sometimes I've called him correctly and sometimes I've called him wrong, but I thought that he would never really amount to much. He didn't strike me at all as being as talented as his father. But of course we all know that he recently married Ashwarya Rai, so I guess I was wrong. <laughs> okay, so that's it for me. Um, I can take some questions from people if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, I know you're hungry. Oh yeah, so I have a prize. Okay, here's the here's the trivia question. What uh, and plastic surgeon, uh, you are you are exempt. What uh, what what is some uh, let's see. In 1999, Salman Khan flew to Boston for plastic surgery. What surgery did he have? Put your hand up if you know the answer. Hair transplant, not a graft, what but a transplant. Put close enough. You win the prize. <laughs> Thank you.
questions, otherwise we will go to food. Rudy. Yes. <coughs> Not all your stars, all your friends, what do you use? I don't know, I just, I have no interest. I really, yeah, I haven't really had much interest. The only movie I ever saw was uh, Kuch Kuch Hota Hai. <laughs> Karan Johar invited me to, um, to a pre-screening of the film with just like 10 people. And I went and Anish was there, Anish and Karan and all these crazy people and he watched it. I loved it. And I thought it was really great. And it just so happened that uh, two months later, I asked Karan Johar for that outfit that, um, that um, no, um, what's her name? She married, um, no, not Karishma Kapoor, um, not Karina Kapoor. Uh, no, she's in the movie, um, not Kajal, but Kajal. Yeah, Kajal was wearing, a, 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 in the scene where she's dancing with Salman, she's wearing this outfit, and, and I asked Karin if he'd give it to me so I could auction it off at the uh, Terry Fox event, and he gave it to me, and we auctioned it off for two lakhs. Yeah, and uh, that was the first and last time I ever heard from Karin Dover. We never got along very well. Yeah. And I used to make fun of this TV show, Coffee with Karin, because then I said they're going to start one Chai with Manish. <laughs> the two of them are best friends and they just used to drive me crazy. Okay, uh, any other questions? I don't know why I don't watch them, I just don't really... <coughs> I mean, I always get an email from them when they've got a problem. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm in touch with some. I, every time I go back to India, I see them all. I see them all. I mean, I, we all get together, we all have a great time, um, but um, I'm not really in touch with my friends here so much. I mean, we're all so busy, let alone in touch with them, but, you know, when they come to Toronto, sometimes they call, sometimes they don't, sometimes they'll email me. They always know how to get a hold of me. Uh, they just call the consulate in Bombay and they get my numbers and, you know, so it's up to them, but I, I mean, I, I don't have time. Like today, one of my very, very famous Vietnamese friends, a very big singer, she's coming to Montreal to give a show, and I, she asked me if I would come, and I said no, because you know I have to start work early tomorrow, and I have to do this today, so I, mean, I don't really get a chance to stay in touch with many people here, let alone you know, the Bollywood crowd, but I know where they are, nothing's ever going to change, you know, it's always the same stars, when I go back to Bombay, I open the papers, it's all the same people being written about, that were written about in 2000 when I left, you know, there are very few new personalities, that's it. And, you know, um, Why would you say that is that non-new people, non-new blood seems to come in? There's, you know, it's hard to break into that whole thing. When I went back in 2003 as acting consul general, I was very surprised to see Shahid Kapoor in every paper. Now, bef that he was one new person that was in. I was written about a lot because of the charity work and other work we were doing. I broke in to that circle. And, and, and people who are very established celebrities in Bombay tell me that it's very, very unusual and difficult to do. My own theory is that there are about 500 people in Bombay that are written about or that are on that circuit. And you see them every night. If you go to a party or a launch or whatever, you will see those people. I say 500, it could be as few as 300, but about 500. And you see them all the time at all the same events. Um, you know, sometimes I wouldn't go to three or four events just so that when I'd see people, I'd be happy to see them. I'd have something new to tell them. I mean, you see the same people every night, you have nothing new to say, really. But it's hard to break into that. And, uh, you know, one way, how do you become a Bollywood star? You become a Bollywood star if you become Miss India, right? If you win the Miss India pageant, or you win the Miss World or Miss Universe, you're, you're guaranteed to get in that door. If you hadn't won any of those pageants or something, you have no chance of getting in that door. It's really hard. It's a very, I've watched the Bollywood crowd at some of the award shows, you know, and the kids will come in, so-and-so's kids will come in and they'll hug Mrs. Bachchan, they'll hug Amita Bachchan, you know, like it's, they all socialize amongst themselves. It's a very closed, I call it the superstar category. You've got your superstars and you have your celebrities. Your superstars are the Bollywood. They really only mingle with themselves. Then you have the celebrities with those 500. And sometimes a celebrity will cross from celebrity into superstar, but it's very rare. John Abraham was a celebrity. He was a male model, Mr. Gladrags. Campaign, every ad campaign he was on it. Uh, and then he made the cross from celebrity into superstar. You know, super celebrity, like, it's very rare. Do any of these celebrities or Hollywood superstars aspire to be in Hollywood? 
Okay, so my first question, uh, or have, have you heard any of them express that to you in your, um, you know, private discussions? And secondly, what do they think of those um, trying to, uh, those from Britain or Canada, you know, trying to break into Bali? I think we should shut the camera off for this particular answer. What is the relationship between the politicians and the superstars? Well, the politicians love to be photographed with the, with the superstars. And any politician that calls a, super, a Bollywood star and asks them to do something, the Bollywood star will always do it because they're scared of the politicians. They're, they're terrified. If Bal Thakade calls, like Bal Thakade gets Michael Jackson to stop on the way back to the airport and on the way to the airport. Okay, you can be sure if he wants any of these stars in his home, they're going to be there in 30 minutes. There's no, okay, that's one example, but chief minister, any of these guys, they're happy to be seen with them. But I haven't seen the, 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 the chief ministers and others, I haven't seen them like falling all over. Of course, the chief minister now, if he's still the chief minister, his son is in Bollywood. Yeah, yeah. Right? What's his name? Ritesh. 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 Uh, Deshmukh. 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 So is he still the chief minister, Deshmukh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so his son is in the Bollywood, in the movies. Yeah. But uh, I don't. if he's any good or not, I saw him a few times. Uh, there are reports every now and then, and there is a greater element in your area. Oh, yeah, you hear it all the time, for sure. I mean, financing distribution, it's all run by the mall in Dubai and all these other places. You know, that's what they say. Um, I don't know if it's true, but I mean, I don't know. I, I, I didn't want to find out. <laughs> I was running my own mall trying to get these guys to do things, so I wasn't too concerned about the uh, Abu Salim and all those other games. Uh, who knows? You know, the cops say they've got tapes of Bollywood stars talking. What happened to Shweta Shetty? Her mother and father were taped. Sorry, Shweta. Shweta, I like. Shweta's my friend in Germany. Shweta, I know very well. Uh, I used to be in a lot of events with Shweta. Or from here. But for parents, I met them. They were tough. Yeah. 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 I mean, Khan, I only met him once. And then shortly after, he, he dumped his wife. So. Uh, and they've been together for a long time, so I never really, uh, I never really socialized with them. I just met him. I met him the same night I met my friend in Beijing. At one point, there was a, a competition between uh, Bollywood and the upcoming Hollywood of Chennai. What do you think of, uh, of, of that? So, I, you know, the film industry in Hyderabad is yeah. coming up, and then Chennai is coming up. Yeah. I've never heard of uh, Kollywood. Uh, since I, I don't watch movies as it is, I certainly have seen any South Indian movies. Samir already got her start, though, in the South. She was a very big star in the South, and I think now she's breaking into one person told me they heard of Samir. Is that you? Is she, uh, have you seen any of her movies or anything? Or? She's, yeah, I heard, I heard she's doing well. I heard she's doing very well. I mean, I, she, she and I had to tea together when I went to uh, Bombay in you know, 05 and uh, I mean, I was really surprised at the, uh, the, the way traffic was stopping and people were stopping for her. I think she's, you know, up and coming type. I don't know. But uh, I don't know if you know the Hollywood. And I, 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 think, I think Bombay is a world into itself. And I think it's going to be very hard to Okay, I think I'll leave it here. If you have any questions left, you can ask me about what you need because I'm hungry.